Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today. This is a little bit different than the normal vlogs that I do. I have officially been vlogging for one year and I wanna share some of the different things that I've learned and how maybe it can help you if you're thinking about starting a vlog channel or you're just interested in learning more about vlogging. So let's go ahead and get today started. I will say the number one thing I learned in the last year was show, don't tell. Now this is something in the beginning that I wasn't that great at. What I mean by show don't tell is I mean don't just talk about what you're doing. Show yourself painting your RV versus talking about painting your RV. That was really hard for me because I I don't know it's just something to get used to because you have to get used to setting up your camera at different angles and getting different shots. Like that's an easily forgettable thing. When you're going to do something, it's easy to forget to film what you're doing or hit that record button. Then you're like, oh crap, I didn't film all of that. Maybe I'll just tell them about it. Now, sometimes it's okay. It happens. I still do it. I still forget. I'm still getting in the groove of vlogging, but I have improved over this year. What I like to do is I like to sit down and I like to think about my next day and what I'm going to vlog. And I like to think about the activities that I'm going to do so that I make sure in my mind when I'm thinking about those activities and I'm making sure I have my tripod ready or I have the GoPro prepared so that I can get those shots that I need to help insert into the vlog. So it's not just me recounting my day verbally, it's actually you're seeing the activities that I'm doing. The second thing that I learned over the last year is that consistency beats fancy. And what I mean by that is if you are consistent, whether you film on your phone or whether you have the nicest camera in the world, it doesn't really matter. There there are some great videos and I go to their page and they only have one video and then they disappeared for two years and I'm like wow what would have happened if they kept going in those those two years so if you are committed to consistency then over time you can become fancier with your equipment but start out with the tools that you already have you can start a vlog series on your cell phone edit the vlog post the vlog all from your cell phone that is the amazing part about 2020 is that you can do all of this on your cell phone if that's all you have. And if you're really committed, you will find a way to make it work. So consistency beats fancy. Over the last year, I've released about 57 to 60 videos, which I'm gonna do a more in-depth um, analytic video and next week, I'm not monetized yet or anything like that, but I just wanna share with you of uh, being a year of consistency, what that could mean and look like for you. I know, I know, I know, I know. I I know this is a long-term game and I know this is going to take me a while, but I have a long-term vision of what I hope that my YouTube channel can do for me and my family. And so I keep that in the back of my mind at all times. This is not a get quick rich scheme. This is not, oh, I'm gonna be monetized next month. Oh, this video is gonna take off. I know that it's gonna take me time to make that happen and I'm committed to the time. By being consistent over a long period of time with my history as an entrepreneur, I know that consistency pays off and whether it takes me five or ten years I don't care I'm committed to this process because I know long-term effort equals long-term results and so that is what I'm staying focused on so consistency beats fancy don't worry about having the nicest camera don't worry about having the most up-to-date nicest editing software out there just use what you have and get started the third thing I learned in the last year of vlogging is thumbnails matter now I'll be honest with you I was not making very good thumbnails for a very long time. It was, it's just over the last month, month and a half that I've started really focusing on making better thumbnails. This is something that I just really didn't take the time to learn. That's something that has really made a tremendous difference in the click rate on my videos, the ability for people to want to watch them. A lot of people said it before and I did the best I could, but over the last month and a half, I've really taken that to the next level. I've learned how to crop people out and do things like that, which has tremendous help the graphics just make it so much better and so much more interesting for the viewer to click on the video and actually watch it so I would say thumbnails do matter if you're wanting to get your videos clicked on to be watched I'd highly suggest taking some time to learn that I personally use the over app I know I've heard other people say they use Canva there's so many different things out there I love the over app and I'll put a link in the description area so you can go there and check it out if that's something that interests you the fourth thing I have learned in the last year of vlogging is you can repurpose your videos not just for YouTube but for Facebook watch also. 
also. Facebook Watch is a new feature they've just had in the last few years. You have to start a business page. You do repurpose your videos a little differently, like the end titles and things like that, but it's super easy to do and I love it because I already have a pretty good following on Facebook so I can leverage those followers to build my Facebook Watch page and get views. Here's the deal. A lot of people on YouTube share their links to Facebook to get viewers on YouTube. Now, I don't have a problem with that, and I did try that for the first of this year, but I'll be quite honest with you, I didn't really like it as much. I would rather build an independent YouTube following that's independent from Facebook because I have a great Facebook following, and I'm like, okay, if I can just keep my long-term goals in view here for my YouTube, I can actually build a very substantial income with people who watch YouTube all the time. Because if people are spending a lot of time on Facebook, I might as well make it very easily to watch on there. And so I repurpose them and post them on my Facebook business watch page. Eventually, my hope is that I can get those monetized as well and start making money from that separately. And so that would be actually two different income streams, one from Facebook watch and one from YouTube. And so if I can expand that and I can work double duty for both of those, I think that's the best option for me at this point. Now, it may not be for you. You're going to have to find out what works best for you. But that is what has been working for me. And I've done this for a year. I did it just posting videos. I took a break from that you posted my YouTube link then went back to post my videos and I'll say that I love posting the videos as standalone content on Facebook it's just working out way better for me than sharing the link because I already have a great Facebook following and so that is helping me tremendously the fifth thing I learned in my first year of vlogging is that it was basically a year of learning and improvement on all fronts on my camera presence on even me sitting here looking at this camera in the lens that that is one of the hardest things to get comfortable with doing is talking to you guys, talking to a group of people on a camera. It's funny because Shiloh will always say, show them this, or how are they doing? What are they up to? She asks about you guys and she speaks to the camera like she's speaking to a person. And that really taught me so much. It's funny that my five-year-old daughter could teach me so much of speaking to you guys, speaking to you as my audience and as my friends who are joining me along in this journey. And that's one of the biggest things I learned and I improved on in the last year, as well as my editing skills. If you go and back and watch my first vlog that I released last summer and you go watch my most recent one, there has been so much improvement. The biggest thing I can say is learn as you go. Don't think you need to be an expert at first. Just do what you can with what you have and do the best you can. It's not going to be perfect. You have to get perfection out of your mind. If you are looking for perfect, you're never going to be able to accomplish anything because you're going to be waiting for an unattainable expectation on yourself. Perfection will never come. You can do the best that you can with what you have and you will learn and grow over time. I promise you that. Constantly be a learner. So what I do on a consistent basis is I am watching other YouTubers. I'm learning how to improve the analytics on my YouTube stuff. I'm watching family vlogs and at the same time I want to preserve memories for my kids for the future. So that is really my main big thing of doing all of this is that we can relive our lives for the rest of our lives online. That has allowed me to take the pressure off of this and really learn as I go. So I don't try to implement a lot of things at once. I try to do a little bit at a time. Once I feel like I've mastered the certain editing style that I'm doing, I might try to learn something new that someone else is doing and start implementing that in and just slowly add on new skills and layers to my repertoire of editing and filming and just different ideas. Every vlogger has different techniques that they use, different things that they're doing. And so what I try to do is take that as inspiration for myself to improve and grow as a vlogger as well. This last year of vlogging has been absolutely amazing. We've gotten so many great memories captured on film and I'm so excited for the future to see what else we can capture. One of the biggest things is, is that I love creating. I love being creative and this outlet allows me to be more creative than anything I've ever done in my life. It is very time consuming but I'm so passionate about it and I absolutely love doing it. As long as you're following your passion you'll never work a day in your life and that's hundred percent true for me. I get to follow my passions every Every day and I'm so thankful and blessed for that. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I would not be here today without every single one of you guys. Your support and encouragement really just 
I'm so thankful for it. Comment below if these tips and tricks helped you in any way. I hope you guys have an amazing day. We'll chat soon. Bye.